There he goes. The world's most unlikely villain. Back to Villain HQ. You can just feel the happiness. We noticed that you've been passing this book out to heroes. They have been watching him, as he suspected. You're someone who gets us. Gee, thanks. I would love to get you too. Teach me some time. Exactly. Your core fan base of teens and 20-somethings would be a great boom for us. I like how this turned into like a marketing meeting. Not all these people are, are cut out for board meetings. From what I see, UA students haven't grown all that much. <laughs> are you kidding me? Are we watching the same show? <laughs> you may go, Hawks. Totally bought it. Or did they? Or did they? Fierce wings can detect sound vibrations in the air. Allowing me to interpret it. I can hear you. That is actually incredible. The, the scope of his powers just keep increasing. At first I was like, yeah, you know, Wings, Wings dude, Wings hero. Speaking of reaching new heights of your quirk, watching Hawks this season, I can't but wonder if it wouldn't have been a more exciting choice to sort of make it ambiguous what his side was. But then again, one thing that makes this kind of espionage situation more exciting is that you don't really know who is playing who and to what extent. You know what I mean? It's possible that the villains are okay not knowing his side and are just getting enough utility out of what Hawks is doing or even using him to leak information. Who knows? Four months from now... Boom. Everything is destroyed. Four months, will right. Ruin this world. The whole world, you say. Whoa, whoa, it's alright, everything whoa. will be alright. Except for the apocalypse, everything's gonna be destroyed. Oh, hey brother, listen! Everything's gonna be destroyed. And even if you destroy this evil, another one is sure to follow. So get pumped for that. The Carousel! The Carousel! <laughs> Everyone run. Merry-go-round. Oh, merry-go-round. Carousel, I get it. The enemy. Speaking of people not being suited for desks. Over a hundred thousand. And in four months. Four months. Action. Big action. What exactly is Shigaraki planning to do? What's this guy's power? Sideburns? By the time I've got details, it'll be too late. I don't know, I can change it in four months. <laughs> it's a long time. I'll send a signal. It will have feathers in it. I need solid numbers of how many serve the Liberation Army, locations and of their secret bunkers across cool. the country, and the names Identities. of the heroes helping them so they can all be rounded up at once. Yeah, that I feel is super key. 100,000 people is no joke. I mean, that's a country. You know, you stamp out the leadership and more just emerge. I, I mean, I feel like with those kinds of numbers, there's no totally going back at that point. No? This is larger than just a villain plot. This is like a cultural movement, it seems. If we don't do it that way, then we'll lose the enemies we can't see. I'm so curious about this idea that's gripping even the heroes. More manpower. More. More man. And I believe it's going to be beneficial to you as well. Train your work-study students thoroughly. Endeavor. The work-studies are to prepare for an attack. Right. And also for you to learn to love again. Love children. It's kind of like Jurassic Park, where Dr. Allen... Why do I talk about Jurassic Park so much? I don't know. Hates kids at the beginning, but then learns from Timmy and... What was her name? You know what would be awesome, and actually I feel like will happen, is Endeavor learning from Deku. <laughs> Deku's just one of those figures that forever changes all the lives that he touches. If we fail, the safety of the country falls to our students. No pressure. It's good to put effort into beefing up your short-range combat weaknesses. Hey, it's Okami flashback. You try so hard to improve changed how I view students, Tsukiyomi. Yeah, speaking of people changing their mentors. You're a strong kid. And your friends are strong. No too. different. And they're stronger together. This is extra relevant since I just watched Heroes Rising in class when I just killed it, crushed it. Worst comes to worst, Mushroom Girl can just kill everyone. Mirror just happy as ever. This definitely won't go down the way the villains want it to. Damn right. Tell me about yourselves. What are you currently capable of? What weaknesses do you need to improve upon? Oh, this should be good. Self-assessment. Your quirk is so strong that it hurts you. Is that right? Yes. I feel like there's some parallels with Endeavor there, no? I don't usually injure myself. However, uh, recently it's there's a... a long story. How do you explain this? In my current state, I can only tolerate maintaining a certain amount of power. My baseline is about 10 to 15%, but Air Force needs around 20%, so I go a little over. Here it goes again. I feel like Endeavor wouldn't mind this. He's interested in quirks. He's a quirk connoisseur. Go back to a safe level of output. All right. 
See, when I'm fighting, I adjust my power output as I move, so I'd be adding another <laughs> which is hard to juggle. Holy crap, this is the new record. He talks so much, I totally lost the thread. Another one of his quirks. Boring people to the point of frustration. You're saying that you want to be able to constantly adjust yeah, yes, he gets it. when you're fighting? You seem to have a lot in common with All Might. Hmm, see, everyone picks up on it. You've had trouble with your quirk. Trust me when I tell you you're not alone. That's such an amazing and humbling thing to hear. It sounds simple when Endeavor says it, but I actually feel like it's sort of a big, big concept because it's one of the ways in which the information we get about life is, is totally skewed compared to reality because so much of what we see are people in positions of like exceptionalism, you know, people who do things really well. People that enter our field of vision do so at the point at which they reach success and the point at which they maintain success. But absent from our vision is all the struggles they had to do to get there. And so judging life based on the seen and not the unseen, an easy conclusion to reach even subconsciously is that some people are just made for things. But I would wager a guess and say that just just about everyone in that kind of position did so through like blood, sweat, and tears. And I feel like knowing that is useful and something I like because, you know, I'm going to like anything that puts control of my own life back in my own hands rather than just being, you know, random chaos. We typically don't see the struggles people go through to get where they are. If we did, I feel like it would be a motivating force towards just doing that blood, sweat, and tears process. Endeavor was born exceptional, you know, but that that's not all it was. And I think it's actually a really personalizing touch having Endeavor say that out loud to kids because I think there's an incentive to want to reinforce that image that I'm just great. You know, I'm just naturally great. I never failed at all, you know? No, I mean, it never failed a whole bunch. That's pretty clear watching his backstory. I'm only here to figure out what I can't do. That's the real question. Speaking of humble, I don't feel like it's that bad as it sounds at first glance. Over the last year, I've learned a few things. Like having raw power doesn't make you truly strong. And how to express deep emotions without talking. I mean, what I hear is that he, he just wants to hit his limit, which is kind of cool. This kid. Sound familiar? <laughs> and what about me? You're just here to learn flash fire, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> now that I look back on it, I see that my hatred of you was holding me back in some ways. The growth, though. My eyes were opened. Right, Endeavor sort of owes Deku a huge debt. But I want you to know this. The pro I've always admired is the person I watched on TV while sitting beside Mom. Well, that's something you have in common with your father. I came because it's beneficial for me, number one. Don't pretend to be a caring parent in front of my friends. As for being my father, I'll have to watch your actions to see if you earn that. I feel like it's a fair bargain. Right. Very well. That was good. That was a great response. He wasn't triggered by it. He didn't let his anxieties affect his actions. In order to keep casualties down, I hold bystanders at bay using my flames. Those are the basics. Parallel processing and swift response. I mean, he knows his stuff, and he likes talking about it. I mean, he's a true professional. No doubt about that. This winter, I want you to show me that you can capture a villain faster than me just once. This is a strong start, I think, to this work study. He's also showing them a lot of respect by giving them that challenge. Learning full cowling allowed me to control one for all, but I had to practice so that my body would use it automatically. Even though this might sound obvious, it just occurred to me that there's a parallel there for non-fighting just in life. The whole thing about I had to practice to make my body react automatically. Speaking of taking responsibility and not letting anxiety affect your actions, you can substitute the powers for just behavior in general and look at it in the light of they're not things that are out of your control or things that dominate you. It's things that you practice. You know, responses can be practiced too. Virtues can be practiced. In fact, I think they need to be. While it's possible this can happen, I feel like they're generally not things that you just decide one day, right? You don't just decide to be patient or whatever. You know, you practice patience. You can practice being unaffected. You know, you can practice acting the way you want to act despite negative stimulus. There's a parallel between power mastery and emotional or self mastery, let's call it. And it works better if connected to a vision of self like the heroes. Whoa, he never stopped accelerating. That turn. Ida could learn a thing or two. This is the villain. When you're playing an open world RPG and you wander into an area that you're not leveled for. It takes me longer to get warmed up when it's cold out. Excuses, excuses. He probably compressed the move to drive himself forward. I can only see it because I have the same quirk as him. There you go, something to learn. A busy streets nearby. I see. By emitting flames to intimidate the suspect, he kept him from fleeing toward the highway. Right, that's another thing about experts. There's so many unseen things that people don't notice, you know? It's like Bender said in Futurama. If you do things right, people don't know you're doing anything at all. Or was that God that said that? In the winter, I need prep time! Are you going to make that same excuse when you fail someone? Right. It is an excuse. So it doesn't matter it why. You don't get a bad grade. Right. People don't come home. Oof. I want you to improve your precision. You're able to control the shape of your ice to a certain extent already. <laughs> Try doing the same with your flames. 
It's awesome how he just ends up being actually a great teacher. He's doing so many things right, like giving them small, tangible goals, identifying low-hanging fruit of their weaknesses. When I was teaching in China, I attended a workshop about writing, and I heard this interesting idea that in order to improve students' writing, you don't give an outright grade and correct everything. You assess an individual student's ability. You find the biggest problem, and you grade them on their ability to take that and fix that one problem. And then you move on to the next thing, etc. And I thought that was a really cool idea. And I tried it with actually some really, what I thought were, were great results. I also think it's a cool way to just conceptualize progress. You know, you just take what is the, the biggest obstacle or what's the easiest limiter to remove. And in that way, take it one step at a time or do one piece of laundry at a time to put it in the words of Fruits Basket. Air Force still requires concentration though. Then keep practicing until Air Force is second nature to you. Forget about the new power for now. That's great advice. Take the man behind the wheel of that car. He wasn't born knowing how to drive. Turning the wheel, pressing the gas and brake pedals, noting his surroundings. He learned to do those things individually. Right, right. No matter how strong a power you may have, its foundation is built on a steady accumulation of skills. Don't forget what you've picked up in class, but get used to being out here. Because this is real life. All great and measured advice. It's sort of amazing. Sometimes I feel like I'm being pulled along at dizzying speeds. I'll say, being pulled along at arm-breaking speeds. I'll learn everything there is. One thing at a time. Yeah. I'll go beyond. Plus ultra. Holy crap, that was... Amazing. Who knew that Endeavor would be such an amazing teacher? I mean, you wanted to learn from the work study? He's just given it all. He's given it all to you. He's really taken this seriously. And he has a lot to offer. Say what you will about Endeavor. I understand a lot of people don't like him, and that's totally fine. Because, you know, we all place different values on what's important about people. But separating qualities, you can't say the guy isn't talented, and you can't say he's not a, a real professional, and you can't say he's not insightful about hero stuff, at least. What he said, to me, it works on a lot of levels. You know, one, just looking at it in terms of skills, right? There's this real temptation, and I suffer from this so, so badly, to just rush head in and just take it all, all at once and, you know, try to go over the hardest level immediately because I confuse that with growth. Like, oh, I did this, right? I was able to perform well once at this top level, and so therefore, I am like a top person, but that may have some benefits short-term, but I think long-term that often is a, a limiting factor because if you really, really want to push it to a super high level of something, all the foundational elements have to be rock solid. You know, that's why I think in sports people drill the fundamentals so heavily, you know, until you can't get it wrong. I've suffered so much from the realization that had I spent time on those building blocks early, I would have gotten where I wanted faster than if I had just jumped right in and aimed for the top in the shortest amount of time. It can be tough because it requires self-reflection, you know, what I'm actually weak at and deficient at. And it's not as easy as it might sound to, to make that kind of reflection and to admit one's own weaknesses. There's an inclination to try to bring one's view of what goodness is down rather than build oneself up to match like the highest level of perceived greatness. And also I think it works on a non-skill level, it just works emotionally like practicing behavior. I read Ben Franklin's autobiography as a sign reading in college and one idea that always stuck with me and I've done with you know I'd say some some success is blocking out a month at a time and identifying one thing only one thing that you think would like be of great benefit for you to change and then at the end of every day for that whole month or maybe it was two weeks I don't remember you assess yourself honestly did I perform in the level I want to perform at in this thing and you check off that day and anytime you don't perform to your standards on that day you start over and you keep going with that until you've completed the block of time that you set out for yourself in the hopes that that will make it a habit you know that it'll make it something that's ingrained in you and only then do you move on to the next thing the next thing you want to change. And like I said, what makes that difficult is the rush, you know, like a whole month or a whole two weeks or whatever it is. But actually those things have a way of creating a compounding effect where they are additive, you know, they play off each other and they strengthen each other and you just become better over time rather than let's say like aiming to be perfect right off the bat. It just doesn't work that way. So really delivering on this internship, I was excited for it, but I think I was more excited for it on the side of the three students. But what makes me pumped about this episode is just Endeavor actually being really inspiring and like doing his job to inspire them and inspiring me. So I'll see you next time when I hope we, we keep the streak going of awesome Endeavor lessons.